Namaste dosto. When I look back at my job history, I was always doing one thing right. I was following my passions, but I was always doing one thing wrong as well, one very important thing wrong. I thought that having a nine to five job in a company, in a good company, would give me purpose and give me meaning in life. That's honestly what I thought. But does it ever? I think we all know the answer to that. I couldn't find purpose or meaning in my life by working a nine to five job, okay? The entire time, I was just thinking to myself, am I making the world a better place? Or am I just making rich people richer? Or am I just wasting my time working on other people's dreams rather than following my own dreams? Do I want to wake up and go to work today? These were the questions that going through my mind for all those kind of 12 to 14 years when I was working. And I finally broke free one day and I found my purpose in life. And I realized my purpose the entire time has been a desire to help people. My purpose in life is to help people. So that's what I do here now on this YouTube channel. My job is to help you guys. And I hope in some way I'm enriching your life through my content. This gives me purpose in life, helping people and getting your feedback when you say, you know, Carl, you helped me somehow. That's how I know I'm changing the world and I'm making the world a better place. This is what I could never find working for a company. Even though I work for some of the most incredible companies in the world, companies that I dreamed of working for actually, and I'll go over that soon. But what inspired me to talk about my job history and my education history was an email that I got from one of my subscribers, from Abhi Mitra. He says, in one of your videos, you mentioned that you gained your confidence when you turned 30. And now you're confidently traveling India and making videos. But what about your life before you turned 30? How did you gain this confidence and courage? I'm 26 now and I've just started experimenting with career paths. Okay, cool. So bro, let's talk about what I was doing in work and education before I was 30. And then we'll talk a little bit about like courage and confidence and I'll give you guys some advice from what I've, I've learned, you know, becoming a free man after having worked in the corporate world for a good like 12 years at least. So let's go over to my LinkedIn profile. I spent a lot of time building this profile when I was working, a lot of time on it. And as soon as I finish this video, I am gonna delete my LinkedIn. I am never gonna ever use it again. So let's start with my education, okay? And everything I show you, my education and my job history, you're gonna see how this has allowed me to do what I do on YouTube, okay? So first, education. After I left school, I went and studied audio engineering and music production. I followed my passion for music. My, my passions in life were always firstly music, computers, and I don't know, probably third thing would be travel, I think. Now it's India. And so I studied audio engineering and music production, how to produce a band in the studio. And so you'll see this in my videos because I always spend a lot of time on the audio. If people can't hear you, what's the point of making the video? Audio is more important than the actual, you know, visuals of the video. So that's why my audio is good. Next, I went to the University of Auckland and did a Bachelor of Arts in Film, Television and Media Studies with a minor in Art History and German. And my girlfriend at the time, she inspired me to go and try out university. She was like, you've studied music, why don't you go study filmmaking? Maybe you can do something with that later. So I'm like, yeah, good idea, let's go. There wasn't too much thought into it. I just knew I'd probably enjoy it because I was really naughty at school and I hated school actually. And when I got to studying music, I was like, oh my God, this is all I've ever wanted to do. You know, study what I want to study, learn what I want to learn. I don't want to learn all this other crud you're teaching me at school. So yeah, university, it was my element because I could just focus on what I really, really wanted to focus on, my passions. And so I studied filmmaking. Um, art history was a bit of a waste of time, but the benefit was like 90% of the class was girls. German, I can't remember much, maybe like Speck and Krankenhaus, like just random words. It really was a waste of time studying German because 
you can barely use it in New Zealand. It's just, there's no purpose for the German language in New Zealand. There's not that many German speaking people. Unlike Chinese or Indian people where you'll be meeting them all day in stores and everything. And I can use my Hindi all day long in New Zealand, just fine. So yeah, that's my tip for studying languages. Choose one you can actually use in your home country. So that's how I know how to edit videos, nah? Because I studied film and television. And then I studied a graduate diploma in computer science. And oh yeah, I was in my element again there. I love computers. So I, that was like, it was like heaven studying computers. I really loved it. And there I learned about like computer security, how a computer works. But really the computer security stuff really helps me now with my YouTube channel. When I'm working with Jim Browning, when I'm investigating somebody online, a lot of what I learned there has helped me. And I can write little programs to help me as well. All right, so that's my education. You can see how it plays into my YouTube channel. Now let's go to my job history, which is a little bit more interesting. So I started my career working for the Recording Industry Association of New Zealand in December 2006. This was my first job out of university. Before that, I had been working. I've been working since I was like 13. I had a paper run, then I got a job at a supermarket, then I got a job at a record store, a music store. So I've always worked since the age of like 13. Always. Never not had a job, okay? Always earned my own money and saved it and brought the stuff I wanted to as a kid. And so this job, I started off as an anti-piracy investigator, then I moved up to the manager of anti-piracy for the recording industry of in New Zealand. And in this job, I worked both for the recording industry, for the music industry, and for the Motion Picture Association as well, the movie industry. So for both these companies, I helped them like identify who leaked a movie or who leaked an album. Like I was busy like finding people leaking Lady Gaga albums, or I found the first person who leaked the Wolverine movie back then. And I was also working on other things, like other cool things, like I was building like a Spotify app, and that app became number one on Spotify for a long time. I helped redesign the New Zealand Top 40 chart website. But the bulk of it was investigating people sharing copyrighted music online. So that's where my investigation background comes in. We were investigating, I was investigating people online, but also I was working with the police to bust people selling like counterfeit CDs. We busted some Indian guy in Manurewa selling counterfeit Michael Jackson CDs just after Michael Jackson died, like profiting off his death. And so we took that all the way, I took that all the way to court myself and did the raid of the police and everything. So yeah, a lot of that comes into what I do with these scam videos now. And I was doing the same thing with the music industry as well. Like they kind of shared me a little bit. We were raiding and busting people, selling counterfeit movies and raiding Chinese internet cafes who were, you know, you could just turn up and buy a movie for a dollar from them. So yeah, that was all damn good, fun, investigative stuff. Really, really fun. And then after that, Sony Music called me and they said, do you want to come work for us and be our manager of digital sales? So look after, you know, like all the sales in New Zealand for Sony Music. And this was kind of a dream for me. I'd always loved music. I'd always wanted to work for a record company. That too, Michael Jackson's record company. As a kid, Michael Jackson was my idol, was my hero. So to have his record label call me and offer me a job, I'm like, oh wow, it's like meant to be, you gotta do it. So there at Sony, I went and learned about like online sales and marketing and, and these kind of things. Totally non-technical stuff. It was, it was really good for me. And the thing of that job was it was so much fun. Every week we'd go to a concert, we'd go to all the concerts because we'd always have artists touring in New Zealand. And so I saw, I saw and I met some incredible artists. They're not the artists I listen to, but it's just inspiring to meet these guys anyway. Like you probably laugh, like we met One Direction, we met John Mayer, we met just, just so many artists and I remember going to these gigs, even a One Direction gig that I was at, I'd like look at them up at the stage and I'd be like inspired by them, like they're living their dream, they're focusing on creating art, like that's what I want to be doing one day, not working to sell their music, you know? So I was always inspired by artists and going to their performances. We didn't get, I didn't get to meet anyone like that I totally loved, like... <laughs> Just after I left Sony, they went and met the Foo Fighters. I'm like, damn it, 
that would have been awesome to meet Dave Grohl and everybody. Wasn't to be. I'll tell you more about that soon. So I got made redundant from Sony. The music industry had been like sliding down for so long and it's just no money in the music industry. It's such a difficult industry to be in. So I was there for two years and got made redundant. And so I came back to my old job. They took me back. This company, the Recording Industry Association of New Zealand, or they, they later changed it to Recorder Music New Zealand, the name. It was always like a family to me. They were always so nice to me. And you can see that by them taking me back after I left them to go to Sony. Like, yeah, amazing people. Yeah, I really, really miss them. So I always enjoyed working these jobs, but at the same time, in my gut, I was always like, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to be doing this. And every morning I'd be like, oh, I don't want to go to work. Do I have to wake up and go? Yeah, I think what kept me going was probably the people. I really enjoyed working with all these people. And then finally, during all that time I was in the music industry, I was studying that computer science degree because I knew the music industry was dying and that I needed to go to IT where I had a future. So I left recorded music again and I went and became a network and security technologist, they call it, at Tech Futures Lab in Newmarket in Auckland. And that job lasted five months. The hiring was just, just done badly, I think. They hired a bunch of us, and then after five or six months, we all kind of, most of us got let go. I think they just hired the wrong people for the job. They didn't know what they needed at the beginning while they were starting up this company. But anyway, my job was to set up the network and set up the security of the com company and set up the computers and all that, like a, like a normal old IT job. And uh, once that was done, there was not much work, so I was gone. And it was at that point in my life when I knew something had to change. I knew I had to take a risk and I knew I had to change. I was sitting, uh, my boss called me and it was like 4.30 on a Friday afternoon. If you ever get called into your boss's office at that time, there's only one thing they're gonna tell you, nah. It's always, you know, sorry, we gotta cut you loose. And so while she was telling me that, I'm just sitting there and I just remember like, I wasn't even paying attention to her. And I was just thinking, okay, now I'm going to India. Now I'm gonna follow my dreams, now I'm gonna follow my passions and I don't care if I don't make any money. I'm gonna trust that it's all gonna work out and I'm gonna trust that it's just gonna work out somehow, you know, like I'm gonna be successful. And if not, at least I tried, you know, I can always come back and get another job and IT easy peasy. But I gotta, I gotta give myself a year or two now and try and make it on my own. So that was my work history and I don't regret these years. These years, were an investment in myself. And I actually needed to do, I needed to do all these years. I needed to spend time at university. I needed to spend time working because I always, I needed to grow up a bit actually. I was always a bit immature. And the mentors that I had in these companies, I was always working with great people. I had a couple of mentors who really mentored me in life and helped me become the man I am today. So without doing all this, I wouldn't be who I am today. So. Yeah, these years weren't wasted. I actually learned a lot and I became who I am. So yeah, I don't regret working in you know, the corporate life, but I don't wanna go back to it. <laughs> and now so you can see how my education and my work, they all combined into me making these really popular scammer videos. And these videos about scams, they're not for entertainment. I don't make them for entertainment. I, I make them to help people, to educate people, to make people more street smart and especially tourists when they come to India so they can really, really enjoy their time in India. They can avoid the bad guys and just have an incredible time in incredible India. That's all I've ever wanted for people and that, that inspiration to make those scam videos came from me being scammed so many times when I came to India. And I'm a, I'm a positive guy so I'm able to look past that stuff. But a lot of foreigners were coming here, complaining they've been scammed, and then going home and telling everybody else at home they've been scammed, and maybe they shouldn't go to India because it's dangerous. So yeah, I'm able to educate foreigners and tourists, and I'm able to help India's reputation at the same time. So yeah, this is, this is my purpose in life, to help people. Now let's talk a little bit about confidence, courage, and I give you some advice if you're not sure about what you're doing, okay? Confidence comes from trusting yourself. I didn't find confidence until I started finding my purpose in life, okay? And what I mean is, I took that risk, I left New Zealand, I came to India, I started writing a book, and I released that book, I started a YouTube channel, 
and I just trusted that everything would work out for me. And with every little win along the way, like the first copy of my book selling, my YouTube channel starting to get a few views, the numbers growing, with every little kind of small win, my confidence was growing, okay? And it just kept growing. And when I talk about confidence as well, I never have had the confidence to speak my mind back in New Zealand when I was working for these companies, okay? When I started on YouTube, YouTube actually gave me that confidence to speak my mind and say what I thought. Like totally raw and unedited, okay? And I got the confidence from that because you guys responded so well. You guys are like, yeah, yeah, I agree. And I love what you're doing. And that just built my confidence and built my confidence in my own voice, I mean. Like, I felt like I have a, I feel like I have a voice now and I can speak my mind and not have to hide it because so many people are scared of speaking their mind just like posting a tweet, for example, because they can lose their freaking job. Why should you be so scared to speak your mind because you can lose your job? That is just sad, you know? It's just, you can be canceled for a tweet. Even the smallest little thing. So yeah, so glad I'm out of that. I'm not, I'm not trapped in that anymore and I can just come here and speak my mind to you guys and that helped my confidence build too. Now I'm basically at a point where I'm not afraid to be myself. That's confidence, isn't it? Not being afraid to be yourself. I think that's confidence. And you also get to the point where you don't care what other people think about you as well. That's something that happens when you get a lot of confidence. You don't care about criticism. You fight back. And actually, I can probably credit India to giving me all my confidence. It's something that you learn in India. You have to fight back if someone's pushing you here. Yeah, I really gained my confidence in India, from India and from YouTube, okay? Now courage, I think courage comes from doing what you want in life and making your own decisions in life. So courage comes when you face a challenge and you fight a challenge. So let's say it's your parents. When you fight them and you tell them, no, I don't want to get married. No, I don't want to take that job that you want me to take. With, with every little win, your courage keeps building and when you start realizing you're making the right decisions for yourself, your courage keeps building as well. And so I told my parents that I'm going to India, don't know when I'll be back, but I'm gonna give it a year or two, okay? And they're like, what? Why don't you just get a new job? You can get a job easy and just keep working. Don't wreck your life, don't wreck your career. Don't go to, why India? Why India of all places? If I had to listen to them, if I hadn't uh, like said, nah, sorry, I'm out of here. If, if I had to listen to them, I'd still be in New Zealand working in some boring IT job, probably hating it, probably hating myself, probably wishing that I could get out of it and just run away to India, you know? India is the country of my dreams. It's the country that I love. Thank God I had courage to stand up to my parents and to stand up to anybody else. No one understood my decision, actually. But now they see, <laughs> now they see that it's all good. So my advice to build your courage is take decisions, make decisions. Be a yes or no man. Don't ever use maybe. It's either yes or no, okay? I used to say maybe, okay, maybe, like to avoid confrontation. No, just use yes or no. Look after your interests in life, you know? You're the one who, you have to be happy with yourself in life, no? When you look back at your life, you, you wanna look back on your deathbed and be like, I did it all. I did everything I wanted to do and I did it on my own terms. I didn't not go to India because my parents said so. I would regret that. You don't want to die of regrets, that's what I'm trying to say. You want to die being like, yeah, I, I did it all. I did everything I wanted to do and if I screwed up my life, I screwed it up myself. But what to do? I tried, okay? So that's, but that's what I was thinking back then when I was trying to get out of the nine to five rat race and become my own man and become free. That's what it was always about for me. I always wanted to be free, to earn my own money, to be my own boss and just live a free life doing what I wanted to do and helping people. So yeah, make a decision, use yes or no. Don't use maybe and if you make a decision, stick to it. So if you're experimenting with your career paths and you're trying different things, what I think is you have to be truthful with yourself. Like, be brutally honest with yourself because you know deep down what you want to be doing with your life. Do you want to be 
working in that call center? Do you want to be doing something else? Working in IT in a dingy server room? Is that your dream? Just answer it truthfully. Do you want to go to work tomorrow? Do you want to have to wake up and go to your workplace? Will that fulfill you? And then you have to say, then you have to ask yourself like, okay, if not, then what will fulfill me? What will make me feel free, make me feel like a man, make me feel like I have purpose, make me feel like I have meaning in life, make me feel like I'm doing something that matters. Ask yourself what that is, okay? And you might not know what it is. I didn't know what it was when I came to India. I just knew I'm gonna go to India, that's where my heart is, and I'm gonna try different things and find something that works. So I tried the book, then I tried the YouTube channel. I tried other things as well, like designing a website, designing some software. That stuff didn't work, but then YouTube worked, okay? So try different things like that if you are serious about you know, doing what you want to do with your life only. And it doesn't matter when you find your right path that you should be on, like there's no time limit on this thing. I found my right path. I found my purpose in life, I should say, when I was like 30, 31, 32 something like that. And I don't regret those, those years that I spent, you know, deviating from that path. Everything happened for a reason, that's what I feel. So uh, don't be afraid to, you know, take that corporate job, work that corporate life for a while, and you will learn a lot from it, okay? And I think at the end of it, you might also learn that you don't want to be doing it. But then you've got that experience. You know what you want, you know what you don't want. You meet some great people and you learn a lot, so yeah. There's nothing wrong with working in the corporate world and going to university. I know there's a lot of fake gurus online saying, you don't need to go to university, but I recommend it totally. Now I wanna leave you with the most important thing that I learned. Uncommon risks lead to uncommon success. And that is the story of me here in India. Coming to India against the odds and just trying to make it work, okay? It was an uncommon risk and it led to this very uncommon success. So take risks, people, and I hope it pays off for you as well. Jay Hind.